Hello and welcome back to Power Electronics EE444. This is the last topic for the course and in this next set of videos we are going to cover resonant DC to DC converters. Resonant converters are a highly efficient type of DC to DC converter based on soft switching. This first video is an introduction. Here's an overview for this video. First, I'm going to provide a block diagram of the resonant DC to DC converter structure. Then I'm going to show schematics of a series LC and a series LLC resonant converter. We will look at what's called the equivalent load to the resonant circuit, R sub E. And then qualitatively, I'll show how soft switching is accomplished in a series LC type of converter. And that will also apply to series LLC resonant converters. Here are some really good references, and I will provide this table in the description down below. Here's the block diagram of the generalized DC to DC resonant converter. There are three building blocks. The first building block is a DC to AC inverter structure. And we switch and have an output frequency of our inverter of F of switching, FSWX. We feed this power waveform into a resonant circuit that has resonant frequency F sub zero. F sub zero and F sub switching are close in frequency, but we will be controlling the switching frequency to control the output or the voltage output of our resonant circuit. That signal will be applied to an AC to DC bridge rectifier. We will be typically working at frequencies in the orders of tens of kilohertz, hundreds of kilohertz, even megahertz. Therefore, the filter capacitor will be much smaller in size for our AC to DC bridge rectifier than what we typically use in our uh, online type of rectifiers. Here's the schematic structure of a half bridge series LC resonant converter. We see we have a half bridge on the left hand side of the circuit. And the half bridge has two MOSFETs, M1 and M2, switching in a complementary pair to create a square wave voltage at the node between them. The height of the voltage is VDC, and the lower side of the voltage is zero. That square wave is fed into the resonant tank circuit, that has a resonant frequency omega naught equal to one over the square root of LR times CR. This tank circuit will smooth out the current flowing through the circuit that we feed into this transformer. The transformer has a turns ratio of N to one to one, it's center tapped. And with N greater than one, we will buck the system and create a lower output voltage and with N less than one, we can boost the system. Here we show a full bridge rectifier with our center tap transformer. We did study this in a previous homework problem. Finally, we have a filter capacitor, not CR, that shouldn't be CR, that's just a regular filter capacitor, and an output load. The LLC resonant converter is similar to the series LC resonant converter with the addition of a shunt inductor L sub M. Typically, we design or have the transformer designed to include magnetizing inductance, uh, and so it's not a separate component, but part of how this transformer is designed. And there's reasons for adding or having that L sub M, that magnetizing inductance in the circuit, which we'll talk about in later videos. Otherwise, the topology is very similar to the series LC resonant converter. When we do our analysis, we would like to reflect the load back to an equivalent resistance. The equivalent resistance 
R sub E is equal to 8 N squared divided by pi squared all times V out over I out. In some publications, it's written as 8 N squared over pi squared times RL, where RL is the output voltage div divided by the output current. And we will derive this equation in later videos. The equivalent resistance allows us to further analyze our resonant circuit. Let's talk now about soft switching. Recall in past videos when we looked at switching the MOSFETs, oftentimes the voltage across the MOSFET was held high by the load, specifically an inductive load, or the current flowing through the, the switching mechanism was also high. That's called hard switching and creates vol uh, electrical stress on the device when we are trying to switch at, at either full voltages or at full current loads. In soft switching, we switch when the voltage across the drain to source is nearly zero or at zero volts, or when the current load is near zero. So here we show our switching arrangement, and this blue line is the output at this node. Uh, we have a 20 volt source, and we see we are switching between 20 volts and zero volts. The red line is the current through our load, and we see that that current, I, is sinusoidal in nature. We also see that we are switching M1 to M2 when the current is nearly zero. Let's look at this in more detail. Let's specifically look at the case where M1 is closed and M2 is open. And here we would have this switch is closed, M1 is closed, and M2 is open. And that is right up here. Right before the switching moment, right at this point, we want to break before make, and I've talked about this before, where we're going to break M1 before making M2. When M1 opens up, the current is still flowing in a positive direction, but as M1 opens up, the current will switch and flow through the body diode of M2 at this point in time. Right before the switching, we start to turn off M1, M1 opens up, the current is still flowing a little bit and starts to flow through the body diode of M2. When that happens, the voltage across M2 becomes near zero. It's basically a voltage, uh, a diode drop of about 0.5 volts to 0.7 volts, depending on the body diode. And at that point is when we turn M2 on. So we see that we are at a near zero current condition. And when we turn M2 on, the voltage drain to source across M2 will also be near zero volts. So we have zero voltage switching and zero current switching. Let's look at the case now where M1 is open, M2 is closed. This is the case where M2 is closed and M1 is open. And right before the switching event, right before this event of switching, we see that the current is nearly zero through the load. And the current is also negative, meaning the current is flowing in this direction. We are going to do a break before make with M2. So we're going to open up M2 before closing M1. The current has to flow somewhere, and so the current that was flowing through M2 is now going to flow through the body diode of M1.
just before this point, before turning M1 on, the current will switch directions and flow through the body diode of M1. When that happens, the voltage drained to source across M1 will be approximately zero. It'll be one diode drop across. And at that point is when we turn M1 on. Again, we will have a near zero voltage switching condition for M1 with a near zero current condition as well. Uh, it, that, that is called soft switching and it, it is extremely low power and easier to, uh, on the switches on, on the MOSFETs. So let's cover the key points in this introductory video. Um, first, we looked at the circuit uh, for our resonant converters. It was built on uh, switching at a frequency that is near resonant with our DC to AC inverter, and it had a tank circuit, and it was followed by our bridge rectifier. In the schematics we had, we showed a transformer, and that transformer uh, in the LLC configuration provides shunt inductance uh, via its magnetizing inductance uh, for the LLC resonant converter. The transformer can also provide galvanic isolation and it allows us to, to either buck or boost on the output. Um, then we looked at how we obtained soft switching. We, we qualitatively described soft switching in our MOSFETs at near zero current and near zero voltage conditions. With these types of devices, again, we talked about it, we can either uh, buck or boost, uh, but the range at, at how far we can buck or boost is somewhat limited. Uh, mostly it's going to be defined by how we define our turns ratio in our, our, our transformer. So those are the key points. Uh, there's going to, the, the next video we're going to look and analyze the, the resonant condition of our tank circuit. And in the uh, other videos, we will look at uh, obtaining the voltage input output equations for the resonant converter. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the series LC, and we will I will provide equations for the series LLC as well, but not as much analysis. Thank you for watching.